Welcome to Beyond the Press Release from production of Gorecom. When we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out more important news. If you're a small cap investor, 2022 is out of the way. If you want to start off 2023 with a bang, then you can't start off with a better place than Royal Helium, who's already got a helium supply agreement in place with a major space launch company that they have not disclosed the name of, but us and a bunch of other people in the market have kind of narrowed it down to one of NASA. Yes, the NASA. Uh, SpaceX, which is primarily owned by Elon Musk, and Blue Origin, which is primarily owned by Jeff Bezos. But uh, you know, there's no way to start off the year better than a bang like that. And for those new to the story, and you've been thinking, well, I always thought helium was for balloons and blimps, uh, then we wouldn't blame you, but you'd be missing out on a much bigger picture because helium is actually a high-tech gas used in many high-tech applications, including you know rocket fuel tanks, at the, which is why they've got the uh, agreement in place with the major space launch company, but also MRI ma magnets, airbags, fiber optic cables, on and on. Uh, so as a result of that, demand from all these applications is creating a supply issue that's just taking the price up uh, in, in helium. And Royal Helium is, couldn't be positioned in a better uh, in a better position right now. They've got plans for the first production, and the economics are compelling. Listen to this. Each well has a low-cost capex, ballpark $1.5 million, just depending on things. Payback, approximately six months, uh, generating 3 to $5 million per year in revenue. Again, that's based on, uh, generally speaking, where the helium prices are. Uh, but that's unbelievable numbers. And you're talking about a shallow well decline over 11 years. Uh, so it's it, the economics are just amazing. The company's already gotten unbelievable projects, uh, including the Climax Nazar project, uh, with an internal resource estimate that it's about between 2.5 billion and 6 billion cubic feet of gas. They've also made an acquisition uh, when they're, that's going to put them in their first production for Q2, uh, Q, you know, Q2 this year from the field because a lot of these you know, a lot of these deals that we talk about don't go production for a long time. Well, Q2 is going to be the first production. And the news we're talking about today to help them get there, they signed a term sheet with the senior Canadian lenders for $17.5 million credit facility and a $5.5 million bought deal private placement convertible to venture with 8 Capital, who, by the way, made them their top pick of 2022. So they've got the deal. They've got the supply agreements. They've got the projects. They've got the financing. Andy, welcome back. Let's talk about it, my friend. Hey, George. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you uh, and looking forward to great 2023. Before we get going with, with the specifics of the news, a lot of people could be tuning in for the first time because they're seeing these headlines saying, yeah. who are these Royal Helium guys knocking down tens of million dollars in, in financing? Big picture, Helium. How does it look? What should everybody know about there about 2023? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing to to know about it is it's a, it, it's a bit of a mysterious resource, and there's never been a lot of people playing in it. There is now, and, yep. and driven by demand, the demand that just is not being satisfied. And you talked about a few of the things in your in your intro there. Rocketry is obviously a big one for us. Um, our customer uses it uh, extensively uh, in in every launch. Over a million cubic feet of helium is used in in every launch, so it, it's a lot. And then you, you talk about MRIs, which you talked about, and healthcare grows at a very stable rate. But it, the one thing you didn't mention, which I think warrants, uh, well, there's two things that warrant being mentioned is uh, semiconductors. Uh, everyone's talking about semis these days. And even the onshoring of semi uh, manufacturing into the U.S., uh, right. they all use helium in the process. And, and even now, some of these uh, microchips actually have helium injected in them. So it's a consumer as well as a, as a user. And on top of that, uh, small modular reactors. Nuclear reactors um, use helium. Realize as that's an application, coolant. and that's that's in the headlines now. Yeah, yeah. So and it it uses helium as its primary coolant. So uh, these are two additional industries that are just that are just driving demand to a to an extreme level, and at a time where where supply continues to come offline. And we've talked about this before, and we can go back on a work and look at our other other videos. But you know. Production has principally come out of the U.S., Qatar, and Russia, historically, with the U.S. dominating. Um, their share of production is coming down in a very material way, the U.S. is. And, and obviously, everything being produced in Russia is subject to sanction right now. So the world is in a very precarious place in that there, there are no replacement products for helium. So all the companies that use it, including the semis, including the rocketry companies, including healthcare, they simply can't operate if they don't have helium. And so the 
the price on it has continued to just skyrocket. It's gone from, you know, $98 when we, for MCF, when we started this thing uh, down to up to about $2,000. But is that per cubic meter? How's that priced? Yeah, that's for, you know, MCF of, of liquid helium, the 2000. It's, it, it's just an enormous number. And so the price we sell it at is uh, 450 US dollars per MCF for gas. And uh, then it gets transported and liquefied and our customer takes it as liquid, but that's, that's uh, their part of the transaction. They have to pay for all the liquefaction and transport, but um, the pricing structure of it is phenomenal. And you talked about payback on wells of, of six months. Uh, I want to be clear that that, that is using a helium price of two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, so that's a, so. If you put up to four fifty, you're cutting that to one and a half yeah. to three months. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. economics are just amazing. Are are there any? And you're ready to go. You've got yeah. supply agreements. You got the projects. You've got an acquisition. You got the financing. Yeah. Um, how strong is Royal Helium compared to a lot of the Me Too companies? You know, George Com Helium's coming in because <laughs> it's a hot sector. Well, you know, how how do you rank yourself? you know, in terms of strength versus as on your own then versus your peers? Well, I think importantly, we we don't because there really isn't competition in the helium space. There is such a gap between demand and supply that there's room for all of these companies to be successful. So it's not that we're better off than any of them. It's just that we're further ahead than most of them, right? So we've, uh, we started before virtually all of them, which makes sense why we're, why we're ahead. We've made some great discoveries. Our first plant is being built as we speak, physically being assembled. Um, that's what the the latest financing was for. Clearly, was to finance that facility built. And as you mentioned, we're going to be on production in in Q two of of this year. So that's man, that's not very far away. Yeah, and obviously the rocket supply company, the the rocket launch company. That I, I look at that as great third party validation because yeah. they're not going to put that amount of trust in you with their supply if they don't think you can deliver so for everyone at home who might be thinking well there's still a lot of moving parts that should give a lot of people a lot of comfort right andy that you know oh, absolutely. they've done their yeah. due diligence they're confident that you can produce and get them the supply yeah no there, there are a lot of moving parts but they've they've seen every bit of our development plan and our, our facility engineering plan and the design and they monitor the construction of it on a weekly basis they're on calls with our wow. internal and external engineers uh, talking about how can we, even how can we make this come online faster? How can we speed things up? Because their their demand for helium is not elastic. They either have it or they don't, which means rockets are going up or they're not. So it's a, it's a real world issue for them. So they placed a lot of faith in our ability to deliver, and we think we're gonna we're gonna do that. For well, them. for people who are hearing the story about the first time, I'm glad we had that you know, micro conversation, yeah. because anyone who didn't know the story right now has got to be saying to themselves, this sounds good. I've got to do more work and do a deeper dive on this. That's a, now let's get into the, some of the, you know, the press release, and the nuts and bolts. You guys have done something, uh, you know, in the last few months that most small companies have been struggling with and that's financing, right? A lot yeah. of small cap companies just can't get it. Uh, you know, how big is it to, for you to have secured 17 half million dollar, you know, a credit facility, not some, dilutive equity financing yeah. from you know, major lenders just how you know how big is that for shareholders and the company well i think when you you know you mentioned it you know talking with our customers providing you know validation for what we're doing um the fact that we're able to come to an agreement with with schedule one banks in, in canada uh, tells you what level of risk remains on this on this project um, they generally don't take a lot of risky gambles and so our cost of capital because of how advanced we are and because of the the level of detail and the fact that we already started building this facility. I mean, we we started the process of funding it ourselves just to sort of give everyone like this is happening. It's not a we need the funding and then we're going to do this. It's it's no we're doing this. So they have a lot of a lot of faith in our ability to deliver. They have a lot of faith in the engineering group we've partnered with, um, and the fact that we're able to secure you know long term debt on this thing at a rate of around eight percent. At a time when you know mezzanine debt's in the fifteen to twenty percent range. Well, you're you're getting a house mortgage at six and a half. Yeah, you know, so yeah. the fact that you're able to get it eight is unbelievable. Yeah, it speaks to the economics of the project. Obviously, when you when we talk about you know paybacks on wells of in the three month range, the facility itself in, in its entirety pays off in two years, a little bit less than two years, and That's then great. runs forever. And 
And this facility, the way we've designed it is it's modular so that when the wells wear out where we're drilling them, if we don't want to drill new wells there, we simply disconnect it, put it on the semi trucks and drive it to the next field and plug it back in. So when I say the facility will run forever, like it, it has a useful life of 25 years. Your CFO also said something really interesting that I liked. Uh, I'm just taking out excerpts here, but it says, A, uh, it's a major milestone, positions Royal to deliver helium to our space exploration optic partner in Q2. But then at the end, I like the last sentence. I don't know if a lot of people picked up on this. It says, furthermore, it'll simplify Royal's access to future production facility yeah. construction financing. So this doesn't seem like it's just a one-shot deal. Am I right in saying, Andy, that oh. this seems like you've secured financing partners for almost anything you need in the future? Yeah, I think uh, I think the right way to look at it, George, is that uh, we're just getting started here. Like this is plant one of many. And uh, the fact that we've been able to partner with some of these very large banking institutions um, comes with, with an understanding that we intend to grow and grow rapidly. And as we're able to prove that we can meet our timelines and, and, and simply just pay back the loans on schedule, uh, which is... Uh, very easy to do with the cash flows that come out of these facilities allows us significant access to additional capital, both through these banks and additional ones who want to join a syndicate to, to fund larger things. And that's just got to take significant pressure because most small cap and emerging growth companies, it's a nature of their business. They're always thinking about, okay, I've got enough funding, take me to that stage. Yep. And I'm going to have to do it all over again. There's always that heaviness, man, it must feel great for you, your team, your, your, your customers, uh, knowing that you've you've pretty much got funding locked in place for as long as you need it. Yeah, I mean, taking that risk off the table does a lot for yeah. for us, for our and for peace of mind for everyone that works with us. But it it should also provide a fair bit of certainty to the market in general. Um, it says, hey, we're we're not coming back to raise you know twenty million dollars to build a facility via equity. That's not happening. And we we we've told the market that every every step along the way. But until you actually do it. It's just words. So we we just did it. You actually had another term sheet signed in November for another debt financing. You guys yeah. canceled that to sign with BDC, the Business Development Corporation, and a schedule and schedule on bank. Well, uh, I'm assuming it was just for better terms, or why at the end of the day, why did you guys do it? And what was the what was the net benefit to shareholders? Well, clearly the terms are phenomenally better. I mean, we the interest is is less than half of what it would otherwise be. Uh, the term is, you know, six years instead of three. Um, everything about is better, and most importantly was the the warrant coverage uh, that came with the other term the other uh, term sheet that isn't present here with the uh, with the banks. So, from a dilution perspective, um, everyone should be far far happier. Well, congratulations well, from every perspective. It's just a, you know, it's a traditional debt piece of paper as opposed to a a secondary debt piece of paper. And and not that it was a bad one. The one that we initially signed, it was it was good. It was the best of those that were available at yeah. the time. Um, but while we were negotiating that deal, we were also negotiating with the banks, and we had it. We had a carve out in our exclusivity, of course, that allowed us to continue down both paths. And uh, this one came to fruition before the other one was closed. Well, on behalf of all shareholders, and I am one, we are one, uh, you know, thanks, congratulations that you're able to have that kind of strength to be able to significantly reduce dilution uh, by getting the, this, debt, this debt deal done. So that's you know, a credit to your team, a credit to your CFO, because yeah. I'm sure they played a big role in that. So that, that's fantastic. Yeah, Jeff led that charge. He's done a phenomenal job uh, dealing with, with the banks and all these, these lenders. Um, it, well, let's make sure, let's make sure we get them a couple extra people. tickets to a hockey game or something like that to, you know, <laughs> as, as a thanks. You got it. Yeah. So what is, what's next for Royal Helium in 2023? What is, what's the cadence that shareholders should look for in terms of how you expect things to go over the next couple of quarters, let's say, what, what are the, what is, what are the, mile, what are the yeah. milestones of yardsticks? So I think, I think it's fair to say that uh, the focus of the company right now and the focus of every shareholder looking at it is, is this first production is getting this, getting these wells in this facility online. Um, there is a lot of a lot of work happening in the background outside of that. Uh, additional exploration work, you know, planning for the completion of Valmarie, which we drilled in August and haven't tested yet. Uh, the plan to do additional testing over Ogama properties in Saskatchewan. That's all in the queue. Um, but it's it's falling behind 
getting the facility online. So what I would what I would say you should watch for is the the facility coming online, the wells producing. We make that announcement in in April May, and then shortly thereafter uh, we start talking about what we're doing in Saskatchewan to advance those fields and bring those on. Our, our capital plan over the next 18 months has us bringing on two to three additional facilities uh, on top of the one we're building now. So this company grows cash flow and it grows quite quite quickly. Nazar, um, you know, Nazar Climax is the yeah. is the jewel in in the company. Yep. Um, let's talk just a little bit about that in terms. I know sure. you kind of touched on it there that you you get to work in Saskatchewan, but yep. that's going to be the next area to come online ballpark i'm not going to try and pin you down to to a specific time but you yeah. know when does that look like that could start happening well you know initially we had planned on on getting in there in q1 q2 of this of 2023 and a few things changed one the oil and gas business is exceptionally busy right now so securing a rig to drill the first production well at nazare is is tough so i'd say it's more realistically q3 at this point but that you you call that the jewel in the crown, and I think that's that's perfectly said for a company called Royal. Um, yeah, didn't mean to do that. Uh, actually. It, it's quite simply the largest helium exploration project um, that we can see anywhere in the world. And wow, I would encourage everyone to to ha to have a look or give us a call, and we'll talk to you about it. There's there's too much detail to go into on this on this update for what Nazare is, but uh, it's a multi billion cubic foot. Uh, helium resource we think in the relative short term how does their sales pipeline look it's great to be able to talk about this so we know you've yep. got a major optic agreement with a major you know space uh, space launch company yeah I'm, I'm presuming that's that and we've talked about this in the past it put you on the map because yep. whoever didn't know about royal helium must have woke up and said who are these guys has how does that part of the pun but How's that pipeline been filling? Uh, if you can give us kind of sneak, if you're able to give us a sneak peek into the level of interest, the calls you're getting uh, yeah, for, for, for other sure. potential so, agreements. The level of interest in what we're doing in terms of, of, of securing molecules from us continues to grow. Um, the amount that we've contracted uh, at Steville is not 100% of the gas that comes out of there. We still have half of that gas left to sell and we're in negotiations with one specific group to take the rest of that volume. Um, should that fall through in the next couple of weeks, that'll be open season on those volumes. And uh, the market price right now for for helium sales for gas for 99.999% pure helium is in that, you know, six to $800 range. So if we have to come back to market with a with a new uh, with a new buyer, I would expect to see prices in that in that range. For so the remaining volume. You, you almost, you all, I don't want to say this, but you almost can't lose. You either nail down another great off take agreement that takes the other half of you know that yeah. facility's production and you're happy. Uh, and if that doesn't happen, well, the the resource that's been sitting there is actually going up in value anyway. Yeah. So if you got to bring another no, buyers, I, you, you you win that way. That That's right. And I think the way to approach it on pricing when looking at Royal is uh, 450 US is the bottom line lowest price we would accept at this point. And, and even then, it would have to be a, a specific, or a, you know, a special situation to sign a deal like that. Massive. The price has moved. Like when, we, when we signed the 450 deal, that was at market. It was a great deal, and it still is a great deal. But the price has moved since then, so additional volumes come at higher prices. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you uh, quickly. There are always risks in every business. I don't yep. care if you're Coca-Cola, there's a risk in your business. And if you're Royal Healing, there's a risk in your business. What are the risks that you guys have to constantly manage, mitigate, and that shareholders should know about as well? Because I think it's, it's great. You guys have always been really great at communicating. You know, What are the kind of things that shareholders should be aware of that you guys yeah. are always managing? So the biggest risk for us right now is, is, is timing and supply chain, right? So as we're building this facility uh, up against a very specific initial production date, um, that's the biggest risk area that, that we miss due to a, a certain component not being available. Doesn't look like that's the case right now, but uh, you know there's still four months between now and delivery time. So that's the biggest single risk that we apply. Now, clearly when you're going to drill wells, there's, there's always drilling risk and exploration risk. Um, you know, traditional 
sort of helium exploration hit rates these days seem like they're in the 25% range. So they, there's been a few misses in the industry recently. We haven't had one yet. Um, we've we've gone <laughs> in Saskatchewan. We've gone I think what eight for eight or nine for nine, whatever whatever that is. Hall of Fame um, numbers. Yeah, and uh, so I mean there will be a miss at some point in our drilling future because there always is. So th that risk is there. Um, we don't see a lot of risk on the pricing side in the near term. I mean we've seen some very interesting things happen in the last six months and certainly since uh, uh, Russia decided to invade the Ukraine. Most recently, uh, just last week, I believe it was announced that Russia seized the assets of Lindy in, in Russia. It's a half a billion dollars of, of, of industrial gas assets that are locked up now. So that's gonna do nothing but put upward pressure on pricing of not just helium, but you know CO2, nitrogen, uh, you name it, every industrial gas. So and I don't see a lot of risk there, but there's always competition risk. But as I mentioned earlier, I mean, the success of any one of our, you know, contemporary companies is, is just good for everybody because there's there's not enough there's not enough exploration to build demand. It's a great time to be in boring old Alberta and Saskatchewan yeah. right now, right? Where the rest it of the is. world is chaos when it comes to helium, traditional gas supplies, all that. Yeah. It's a, it's also, also it's a it's a hornet's nest. And you you come over to Royal Helium in boring old Alberta, Saskatchewan, and you don't yeah. have any of that any of that mess. It's true, and I, I would say in terms of risk, as as a company scales up, access to liquefaction technology becomes an issue, right? To the extent that that we have customers who want to take delivery in liquid, like like we have now, access to third party liquefiers becomes tight as production continues to grow, and that other forces you into you know, partnering with someone else, whether it be an industrial gas company to process all that gas for you and turn it into liquid or uh, building a liquefier yourself. Which yeah, is, you vertically integrate. Yeah. So I, I think that's probably where it ends up for, for companies like us and uh, probably jointly with some of the other players because there are a few big players in Saskatchewan. So it makes sense to do so. But liquefaction and infrastructure becomes an issue as, as scale up happens. Last question. When, if ever, do you think, you know, because we all talk about it, when, if ever, do you think we'll know the identity of the major, the major space launch company? <laughs> uh, you know, the whole world, we've all been doing our investigations <laughs> online and the way we can, we've, we've not, and yeah. you're not even confirming the list, but most of us have, for, have, have narrowed down to, you know, NASA itself, Blue Origin or SpaceX. Will there come a point, will we know, or is it possible that we'll just never know? <laughs> Uh, because you want to protect the identity of customers and, and you don't want the world to ever know that. Yeah, I mean, I, certainly as it stands now, um, we're not going to be disclosing that. It would, it would take a change in, in our in our partnership with this company, uh, taking it to a, to a much larger level, I think, for that for that to come out. Um, and, and again, it, it's a it's a competition issue for the for the customer. Right. I mean, they're they're in negotiations, not just with us, but with other industrial gas companies and other suppliers. And that, that's the reason for the lack of disclosure. It's the only reason for the lack of disclosure. So it's frustrating for us because I, I tell you, George, I'd love to scream it from the rooftops, whether it be, you know, Blue Origin, NASA or SpaceX. Any one of those three is a is a pretty darn good news release. It is unbelievable. Now. Yeah. But uh, as of now, I'm going to say uh, you're not going to know. Then so look, if you see a car sitting outside the plant three, four months from now, and there's a tall Greek inside of it who's following trucks around, it's probably us trying to figure it out. Uh, but I'll, I'll no, let security know. But that's awesome. Thanks for joining us, Andy. We really appreciate you coming on. Uh, man, we're all excited about what Royal Helium is going to do in 2023. And no doubt you're going to be back in no time. Uh, yeah. Last word to you if in case you got a last word, but I know we're going to have you back. But last words to you, my friend. Well, I, I think it's... It is going to be a very strong year for Royal. There's just too many, too many inflection points lining up uh, to be ignored anymore. And, and we're certainly hoping for a better market in general than we had in 2022. That was a tough year to operate in. Um, important to remember with us, uh, we're financed through through the production. So at this point, it's it's you could take the easy approach and sit back and wait for the first check to come in. Um, we're going to do a bit more than that. We're going we're gonna to continue to build. I like that. I like that. It's a great way to leave it off. And I know we're going to have you back on because there's so much going on right now. So thanks for joining us, Andy. And continued right. success to you and the team, man.
Thanks, George. Appreciate the time. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform. To Andrew Davidson, CEO and Chairman at Royal Helium, trades in Canada under RHC. For our friends of the S, RHCCF. For those new to the story, there's going to be a lot of you because you saw these financing numbers wondering who are these guys. You now have a really great idea, but you want to do more deep dive due diligence because you, you're new to Helium. You're new to the space launch and all the other applications that are out there. Get to the company's profile page on Agoracom because we've got it all neatly laid out to you in a real relatable, understandable way for you to get your ground-based you know, ground knowledge. And then hover, head over to the Royal Helium website to do your deep dive due diligence. Thanks for joining us. Have an amazing day. Happy New Year to everybody. This is our first uh, interview of the year. Talk to you soon. Hey guys, the video's over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss another great Agoracom small cap video.